<sighs> so I've been waiting every waking moment for patch six to drop since Valentine's Day. And then Larian decides to drop the patch at six in the freaking morning Eastern time. <laughs> Let's jump right into it. February 16th, 2024, patch six is now live. So as always, I'm gonna start with the highlight section here and show examples when I can, and then we'll jump into all the rest of the patch notes where I took only things that I feel like are important. I'm just gonna read those off chapter markers below if you guys don't wanna hang out for that section. I just wanna quickly say, I've already recorded this video, but I'm coming back in just to tell you that the intro to the patch notes, which includes more in-depth explanation of some of the highlights, is really long. If you want just a really quick overview of the highlights alone, look for the chapter marker below. Right. Two days after Valentine's Day, Cupid has shot his arrows, the chocolates have gone on sale, and the flowers have started to wilt. The perfect time to release a patch. I mean, a little later in the day would have been the perfect time, Larian. Patch 6 for Baldur's Gate 3 launches today, and it's packed full of quality of life improvements, fixes, and a little bit of romance. So on with the show. Love is in the air. This is one of the first major additions to Patch 6. We've made improvements to locking lips with your chosen romantic partner. All characters now have unique kisses that reflect their personality with an emphasis on the plural. These kisses are randomized and vary from incredibly romantic to... Uh, a little more intense. Kisses have also been improved for shorter and taller body types, so embrace without delay. And you can see Shadowheart locking lips with the player character here. I don't know how to test this one out for you guys. I'm not really an expert in romance when it comes to video games, but I know a lot of you guys that are really into this are probably going to absolutely love it. So bravo to Larian for that. And then we also have Lazel and a player character here. A forehead kiss for tender moments when there's a bit of food stuck to your eyebrows. Ew. Ugh. In addition to improved smooches, we've also improved some of our endgame cinematics to better reflect the connection between players and their partners. Love truly has been in the air in the office, or perhaps it's something in our air fresheners. Really cool that Larian's adding all of this. These are like things that didn't necessarily have to be in the game on release, but Larian's just adding them because they know some people are so passionate about the romance in this game and forming those really tight relationships with companions. So really excited to see how that turns out. That might be at the prologue. That might be, you know, after the final boss fight. I'm not entirely sure. Every whittle helps. New camp animations and improvements. You can see we have Helson here whittling a stick with his knife. Keep at it, Helson. Whilst exploring your campsite, you'll notice new idle animations for some of your companions. Not everyone enjoys standing around, and these behaviors should help your campsite feel more alive. Though, we wouldn't interrupt Shadowheart when she's polishing her spear. Interesting. I wonder if there's going to be some interactivity with that. In addition, you'll now be able to dismiss a party member while speaking to the party member you want to replace them with, so no more going back and forth like a Machiavellian party planner. So the camp animations, nice little added touch. I'm excited to see all of those play out to add a little freshness to the camp itself. Let's jump into the game and let me see if we can get, let's see, who's not in my party right now? We want to pick up, let's pick up Gale and we're going to see if we can dismiss Shadowheart without having to go through Shadowheart's dialogue. So walk up to Gale. How can I help? And let's go join me. Why don't you? Oh, nothing will nothing give, give me greater, greater pleasure. pleasure. Oh, here we go. So now we have swap out with Jahira. Mints can make my way. Take Shadowheart's place. Or let's talk about something else. And there you have it. Shadowheart has been replaced with Gale. Man, this is a huge quality of life improvement here. One of the most annoying things in this game was swapping party members and having to go through both dialogues. So this is this is an incredible fix. Thank you, Larian, for that. Next game, let's make sure this is in there from the start. Okay, you hear me, Sven? Improvements and fixes galore. And then we have a little scene from Act 2 here. I believe it's showcasing some new honor mode legendary actions. So be prepared. If you guys are playing honor mode, there's going to be a few surprises. We'll talk more about that here momentarily. Patch 6 is an all ambience in canoodling, though. We fixed a deluge of player reported issues. Shield Bash fans rejoice. Let me test out Shield Bash right now. Let's see if it works. Here we go. Shield blow. When struck by a melee attack, your attacker must succeed a deck saving throw or fall prone. And there we go, folks. It is working again. I think it broke maybe at patch four, so it's good to have that back because it can be quite powerful. And we made several tweaks and improvements to the game. If you're playing in honor mode, expect a few extra surprises in the form of new legendary actions for bosses and maybe a bit of extra trouble from a certain mound. So after showing this act two scene right here and then talking about the mound, which is also like an act two mini boss, I think we're going to see some new legendary actions on characters in the game that didn't have it before, which will make it a little bit more exciting to go clearing, you know, clearing out the maps and doing all the extra side fights. Kind of curious to see how this is going to apply to bosses, like full bosses that already have legendary actions. We'll have to wait 
and see. And if we leave the patch highlights and go down into all the little details, we actually can see the Shambly Mound is now a fully fledged honor mode boss with brand new bespoke legendary actions and tuned up abilities. And also the Dryder and Drawer Ragslin have new legendary actions in honor mode. We've also made some improvements to speaker selection. When in dialogue or when dialogue triggers automatically, the game will now try to prioritize your avatar as the main speaker. So your party members should have less main character syndrome when clearly you're the star of the show. So sometimes when you're coming around a corner, you're heading into an area that automatically procs a cutscene, the character that you're controlling ends up being the one that's talking, when in most cases it should be your main character because it's an important scene and your character's the main character. So that's an improvement. I would say most people are probably happy with that. We continue to work on future updates to Baldur's Gate 3 with further improvements, fixes, and patches yet to come. So Larian's not done. But before we dive into the full highlights for patch six, I know you guys thought we we're already in the full highlights, right? A warning about mods. If you experience issues after installing our latest update, please check whether the issue persists with mods uninstalled. Currently mods aren't officially supported. We're still waiting for that official mod support from Larian. So some mods may be temporarily incompatible with new patches and hot fixes. If you continue to have issues after uninstalling all mods, yes, even that one, please reach out to our support team. Solarian showing some support to the modding community, even though modding is not officially supported yet. Patch 6 will be going live today on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, and will require approximately 150 gigabytes of free space to install for those on PC and Steam Deck. If you find yourself without space to install the update, we recommend uninstalling BG3 and then re-downloading the patched version. So I don't really know how this all works, but for some reason, when you download a new patch, it basically like reinstalls the entire game it's not adding another 150 gigabytes onto your hard drive but at the time of the installation you have to have that extra 150 free so that was just the introduction to the patch notes which gets a little bit more in depth with a few of the highlights now i'm going to go over the highlights section which isn't that long and then we'll enter into a different section where you guys can choose to leave if you would like to because you're held prisoner here right now you can't leave there's three spoilers here i'm going to leave them at the end i'll just have like a little chapter marker so you can skip like 30 seconds ahead or something, but you're fine right now. You can now dismiss a recruited companion from your party while speaking to the companion you want to replace them with. When a dialogue triggers automatically, the game will now try to prioritize your avatar character as the main speaker. We talked about both of those. Your partner now has a few different kisses. They're brand new, unique, and randomized. And we've also made improvements to how kisses look across the board, particularly for taller and shorter body types. If you sit on the stool in Shadowheart's camp corner, she will now react to you with a line based on your relation with her. Cool. More like companion relationship aspects, not even necessarily romance based. Added a new idle animation for some camp companions at camp, including that we have a little list of the idle animations. Lazelle will be studying a Gith Yankee disc. Minthara contemplating a skull, tending to mushrooms, expressing violence, adjusting her armor, plotting her future, and being bothered by the sun. Jahira sitting, kneeling, and whimpering at a rat messenger and whittling. Mince cooking and shaving his head. These are two separate animations, although we wouldn't put it past him. He's not, in fact, cooking his head. That's pretty funny, Mince shaving his head. Shadowheart polishing the night spear, and then Helsin doing the whittling, which we saw earlier in the intro section. If you started your game on a set difficulty, you can now switch to custom mode, except when already playing honor mode. Fix an issue that would prevent travel between acts. Fix an issue causing quick saves to fail to upload to cross saves. Characters in the epilogue camp party will now have fitting titles below their name. That's interesting. Fix the shield bash, shield bash and rebuke of the mighty passives not triggering saving throws. So these are both, I think, rebuke of the mighty passives is, I don't want to get into spoilers too much, is from an act three boss. I think it's similar to shield bash, but both those should be fixed now as I tested and showed you guys. Added light bar colors for the dual sense controller on PC. If you romance Lazel, grab a red dragon and saddle up, you can now join her in the rebellion against Vlacketh, even if you're not Gith yourself. We're gonna be we're gonna be trying that one. That's pretty huge. Fixed graphic settings not being applied for some 4K monitors, and fixed a crash on Xbox that would sometimes occur when starting or ending a game. A game. I'm also gonna add in a UI graphical overhaul improvement that's lower in the patch notes. It's not part of the highlights because I think this is a highlight. Some of you guys are wondering what you're looking at right now. This is the graphical overhaul when you trade with a character now. So now it better clarifies which character is bartering for the party. As you can see on the top left, Lazelle is trading. You can see her persuasion score much easier. And also the discount price that she's currently getting. And also maybe even more importantly, look at this. We have Wolf, my character's inventory, Gal's inventory, Shadowheart, and Lazelle all showing on a simple screen so you don't have to switch characters. This is, this is huge. I don't know why they didn't put it in the highlight section. So now there's only three 
spoiler highlights here. So just look at the chapter markers and if you want to pull ahead to the next section, it should be pretty easy, should make it pretty easy for you to do that. Improve the cinematic scenes in the Elf Song Tavern to feel more intimate when you and your romance partner decide your future together after defeating the Netherbrain. I don't know if this is a mistake. After defeating the Netherbrain, you don't go to the Elf Song Tavern. So this is really confusing me here, but we have a lot of things that we got to test out with this patch. Rework the reflection scenes that take place after wrapping up the defeat of the Netherbrain for characters without romantic partners to better match the scenes for those who do have romantic partners and to bridge the gap into the epilogue. Added a new cinematic scene to support the combat encounter that occurs after you choose whether to side with Night Song at Sorceress Sundries or not. All right, so that's it for the highlights. We're going to jump into the rest of the patch notes here. Oh my god. I'm going to try to compile a list and, and just give you guys like my version of the highlights of these. So starting with gameplay, you can now toggle off Repelling Blast as expected. If you long rest with only alcohol as camp supplies, you'll now get the new hungover condition for 10 turns. I love it. Auto selecting your camp supplies before a long rest will use resources more optimally. Sometimes you just don't feel like cooking. The long rest camp supply menu is now better at pulling supplies from inside containers and companion inventory. Stop hoarding the cheese will. Group hide now works on all party members controlled by the player, including followers and summons. That's a nice improvement. Made it possible to dismiss party members during camp nights. Also made it possible to recruit hirelings to a full party. They'll hang around at camp until you need them. You can now talk to the circus bard, Mardrash, and get a short but enthusiastic response from him. The owlbear cub will no longer gobble up Auntie Ethel's hair before you can take advantage of the bonus that it grants. I heard a couple players getting really frustrated over that, especially on honor mode because you can't reload. The elixir of hell giant strength now applies its effects when thrown. Creating a harmful surface beneath NPCs will now trigger a crime reaction. Scratch can no longer equip certain weapons like the Everburn blade. I didn't even know he could... Who tried equipping the Everburn Blade on Scratch? Added the option to scale the density of crowds on Xbox. That seems like a nice improvement to maybe get some better performance. As quality of life improvement, the packed weapon condition now remains after a long rest. Okay, moving into combat highlights. The Shambling Mound is now a fully-fledged honor mode boss with brand new bespoke legendary actions and tuned up abilities. Good luck. The Drider and Dror Ragslin have new legendary actions in honor mode. In Tactician mode, the Drider has a special sanctuary called Spindleweb Sanctuary that erupts in psychic explosion when the status condition ends. In addition, his Spindleweb fanaticism aura will now debuff his enemies. Some more details on increased difficulty, even on Tactician mode. In Tactician mode, Dror Ragslin's leadership aura will now also debuff his enemies. Jahira could be in bad shape by the time she arrived. You know what? Let me just stop and say really fast that this section is going to be filled with spoilers. So if you don't want to listen to it, then exit the video right now. I appreciate you guys watching the highlight section. So Jahira could be in bad shape by the time she arrived at Moonrise Tower since she already had to fight. She's now smart enough to heal up before she goes there, which we're hoping lets her last at least additional seconds in combat. That combat that's funny because she does die quite a lot when you go to Moonrise Towers. The frightened condition applied by Ketherick's dreadful aspect will now correctly end if the combat with Ketherick ends before the condition does. Improved combat AI pathfinding through dangerous surfaces and through steep terrain. Now we have flow and scripting changes. Increase the number of valid methods of knocking Minthar out to Recruiter. Helsin no longer blames the goblins for his death in his Speak with Dead dialogue if he managed to kill to get killed much later on. Fix the case where the lance board scene with Raphael and Mole would never trigger because of the script being too defensive when checking Raphael's current in-game state. You could finally tell Helsin that you found that letter that was sent to Kaga. Will will react accordingly if you fail to save Ravenguard from the Iron Throne when the Pact with Mazora is broken. And fixed an issue preventing you from talking to Marina after the fight with the Hag. Alright, on to UI improvements. You can now change the size of text and books and other legible items in the interface options. Updated the interface visuals for the options and difficulty menus. Renamed the class passives panel for sorcerers on level up to metamagic and added a description for it. This was to make naming more precise given that all class passives for sorcerers are metamagic and the main level up window already tells you that they're passives. Renamed camp companions button to camp inventories to more clearly indicate what it does. Added a custom mode settings to the lobby UI, giving you the time to create your personalized experience while waiting for your friends. Camp chests are now integrated into the camp inventories UI. Fixed incorrect button prompts and mapping showing for Switch, Pro Controller, and PC. 
Reverse pickpocketing should now work correctly on controller. Improved how the combat log indicates XP gain. Now, if everyone in the party gains XP from several different sources at the same time, like when you fireball a bunch of rats, you'll get one entry in the combat log with a calculated total XP gained rather than separate entries for each XP clogging up the whole log. And added a subsorting or added subsorting to throwable items on the hotbar so the most recently picked up items will appear first. Little quality of life improvement right there. On to the writing. When faced with certain choices after the Netherbrain is defeated, you can now tell Lazel to make her own decision. Added additional Avatar Karlak and Avatar Astarion reactivity within God Gale's dialogue in the epilogue, allowing them to request a cure for their conditions. Added some new lines to Minthara's epilogue dialogue to account for different paths where the player character has partnered up with her. Added some extra narrator lines for the Dark Urge when interacting with Gortash in his office. Added new dialogues and reactivity for Lazel regarding the Githyanki egg from the Kresh Elek. If Gal is a Mind Flayer in the endgame when returning to Elysium with Mistra, she will now transform him back into a human. Rephrase some journal entries to account for NPCs being knocked out instead of killed. If you're romancing Shadowheart in Act 2, she'll have more banter as you're walking around. Some of these improvements and additions are just huge. Like, you don't see companies doing this for their games, going all out like this. Cinematics. You can now give Shadowheart a hug when she's crying after losing or saving her parents. Gale can now kiss your hand if you agree to marry him. This scene was also improved with a new intro and outro. Added a new version of the kissing scene with Astarion after he ascends. Then we have a ton of crashes and blockers that have been fixed and improved. Combat and balance has a huge section. Mostly everything from here on out seems to be really specific that only the most hardcore of players are going to be able to even understand or notice while they're playing. I don't even, I wouldn't even notice most of these myself and I've played quite a lot. So I'm just going to kind of just show you guys how beefy this is. I'll leave a link to the patch notes down below if you really want to go through this, but this is just crazy. This would take me like eight hours to go through this. I think it's important that I get this video out with decent timing as it is kind of hype news right now. We have a flow and scripting section across all acts, tutorial improvements. Jeez, it's just like whoever wrote these patch notes, this must have taken like a month. Epilogue improvements for flow and scripting, journal improvements, see, fix the fine mushroom picker quest. It's not really worth me, you know, making a video on stuff like that. Performance and option improvements, tool tips, icons and portraits, character creation and level up has been improved, controller, multiplayer, level design improvements, map, art, animation, lighting, sound, visual effects, more writing improvements, cinematic improvements. Whoo! Wow. Okay. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much, as always, for... What is that right there? Get that out of here. Thank you guys, as always, so much for coming to my channel for all things Baldur's Gate 3. Obviously, the BG3 hype is kind of slowing down now. I will be covering many more games throughout the year, but whatever Larian releases in the future, I'm going to be on it for its entire early access phase, if they do early access and beyond. Really appreciate all the support. It's been a hell of a five years of covering this game and uh, I'll catch you all on the next one.